Welcome everybody, new and old. For those of you that are familiar faces, we're going to do what we always do. Give us one or two minutes. We got a full house, baby. I think a lot of you sitting on pins and needles, wondering what to do with these offers or still waiting on a couple offers and anticipating what you're going to do when you get them and go back to these schools and hopefully get a couple more bucks. So that's what we're here to talk about tonight. Give us again, just one Two more minutes, let your buddies get settled, get yourself settled because we got it's an action packed next hour here. I promise we're going to cover a lot. And this is important stuff here, right? There's a lot on the line, but well, me and Peggy love this. This is, the, this is probably the funnest presentation that, that we do. Hopefully, you guys. Yeah, it's a, a fun part of the process because your kids are getting in and you're getting to the home stretch. I'm um, a couple housekeeping items and you've heard this before if you've been on our webinars. We love questions, so if you have questions, put them in the Q&A. We'll ask you to put some stuff in the chat in a minute. Please use the chat when we tell you about it. Otherwise, put them in the Q&A and there's a little box you can be anonymous and we'll do our best. I mean, we have a lot of registrants for tonight, so if we don't get to all of them, we'll do our best to get to as many as possible. That's we co-present because we love doing it together, but also we can tag team and while one of us talking, the other one can be answering. And we are recording this and we will send out the recording and the slides tomorrow. So if you miss a little bit or you want to show your spouse or whatever, your kids, you're all good. So you don't need to be stressed about that. Yeah, before we kick it off, a couple things. We always like to, where, where are you at in the country, right? We got both coasts represented here. I'm just north of Boston and Salem, Mass. Peggy's out there in the Seattle area. Banger, Maine, right out of the right out of the gates here. So where are you at in the country? And then secondly, Sunrise, Florida. There we go. Kentucky. Oh, that sounds like a nice town. Texas. Lukenbach, Texas. I Renton. Just, I was just listening to that too. Got a Hoosier in here. Fisher's nice. Jersey. Yay. That's where I'm from. Representing Kansas. Kansas. It's nice to see. There's Georgia all over the country. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's fun. And then a couple other things, if you don't mind sharing, good start to our class participation here, which last night, you guys are actually up against it here. Last night's presentation, we had arguably for this year, I think at least Peggy, some of the best interactions, some of the best questions, mm -hmm. which I think makes make for the best presentation because we're speaking of what's top of mind for you guys. But I'd like to know two other things. Which college or colleges are we getting ready to do battle with? Who are we getting ready to tangle with here? Whether we're, again, still waiting on the acceptance or we've already got an offer and we're thinking about how to go back. We know that. And I'm sure we're going to cover the whole gamut tonight. A bunch of these schools will even... Maybe you can talk about specifically, and we got small private schools. We got the big state flagship universities and everything between, and obviously all kind of coasts covered here. And then the assumption is that we're speaking mostly with the class 2023, senior families, senior parents. Do we have any underclassmen? Do we have any 24s or 25s? Any any go-getters out there that are trying to get ahead of this? Yeah, we got some 24s. That's great, actually, because there's a 25. Then we'll you, you'll know what's coming up. And we got multiples, which okay. I get it. I have twins. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, and Peggy, I didn't tell you this. So a couple of our biggest fans are my parents, Don and Scott, generally tune in for every webinar that we do. They're on vacation in Florida, so I figured we'd be missing them. But my mom was just asking me for the link on the drive. <laughs> Like they're tuning in with Florida and they have guests, my aunt and uncle down there too. Hi, mom and daddy and auntie Lynn and uncle Bob. If, <laughs> if you're down, do they know how to party or what Peggy? It's because they, they love do. Hi, Matt's mom. I get to meet you in person someday. Yeah. I feel like you probably already know me because you've yeah. seen so many times. But. So on that note, my name is Matt Carpenter representing College Aid Pro, one of the founders at College Aid Pro. I've been doing this since I graduated college about 20 years ago. So Better part of two decades. All I do all day, every day is try to help families navigate this process in a better way than I did with my parents and my family and my siblings. And it's a hard freaking process to navigate, right? And you guys have already experienced that and it is overwhelming. It is your money. It is your kids. So two pretty provocative things on center stage here, right? So it's like when people are freaking out, we're like, no kidding, you're freaking out. You, you should be in some ways. I'd be worried about you if you weren't. But like we talked about at the top, we're starting with a victory here. Don't lose sight of that. Like your kids are going to college next year. Like 
in a lot of ways, you did your job, right? These kids are getting ready to leave the house next year. They're going to go to college. Of course, it's overwhelming and expensive and all that. Our goal tonight is to help you understand how you can get a better deal than what you've got initially or level set expectations and say, hey, you're probably what is probably what you get. But that's the deal for tonight. And yeah, again, I want to make sure we get into it. But you guys are fortunate enough. If you haven't been on the receiving end of the screen for the fairy godmother of financial aid, here she is, alive and in the flesh, Peg Keo. So Peggy, if you want to tell a little bit about yourself before we dive in, we can uh, we can get cooking. Yeah. And guys, a lot of the questions you're putting in, which I love questions early, that usually means it's a great crowd. We are going to address pretty much everything that's in there. So you will be be well taken care of. Yeah, so my background's in the financial industry and probably like a lot of you guys, I have twins when they hit high school. I did this deep dive into how does the whole college, not the saving for college, but how does getting in and all that stuff work and realize, holy Toledo, this is way more involved than it used to be. And being a financial planner, that's my sweet spot, my love zone, right? When I'm planning, I thought, ooh, I can like, I had this aha moment that I could focus on this and work with families, do my financial planning, but work with families in this spot in depth. And so that's what I started doing. I started my own business and then actually met the guys at CAP and they, I was looking for software and they were said, Hey, do you want to beta test our software with us? And of course I did and got to know them. And we just like-minded and kept in touch throughout the years. And then just made sense in 2021 for me to join CAP, a lot of different reasons, but, and so I joined CAP and continuing to do this kind of stuff. I'm the director of education. So that's what I do. I educate because really guys, the, if you are informed consumers, throughout this whole process. So you younger pick 24s and 25s, stay tuned to all of our webinars because the more you understand about how college is priced in this whole bit, you are in the position of power then with the colleges. What we're going to teach you tonight about the appeals is no different. Like you're going to understand how to navigate this. Doesn't mean that you're going to always be successful and we're going to tell you when it's a good idea, when it's not to appeal, but you don't know what you don't know. And so that's what we're here for is to educate you around that and then support you if there, if you need support through different means and we have free resources and the whole bit. So my best credentials that I've been through this times two. So I get it. I totally get it. It's emotional. It's your kids, like Matt said, and it's your money, but you'll get through it. And it doesn't need to be super, super stressful. It really doesn't. So not everybody's a chill, cool mom like you, though, Peggy. It's easier said than done there. But. Yeah, I wish my kids were registered and listening to you say that. <laughs> <laughs> like your mom. Okay. All right. Let's get started. So literally, th- this is our mission at College Aid Pro. And like I just said, the way you're we're empowering you to shop smarter for college is by educating you. So you're an informed consumer. And there we are, the happy couple. Let me get rid of this that thing. Um, So all of you should have gotten an email earlier today encouraging you to open up your free MyCap account. If you did, awesome. Go ahead and hopefully have that open on the side so you can watch us as we're going through stuff. And then you can actually see it in your account for yourself real time, which is pretty powerful. If you want to go on and do it now, you can. Matt will put the URL in the chat, but I guess the teacher, I want you to focus on what we're doing and not be opening up your MyCap account, but Matt likes you to do it. So I do. Yeah, we do have different philosophy there, but sorry, we're getting a few questions. Like how do we meet one-on-one? Can you guys help us with our schools with negotiating and all this? Two things we actually pay good thing. We forgot to mention what we reminded ourselves right before tonight. If you remember anybody that uploads an award into your MyCap account, any financial aid awards that you upload, and we'll talk about the benefit of why it makes sense, you're automatically entered into our scholarship, $1,000 no essay scholarship. So we'll show you how to do that, but we forgot to mention that right at the top. The yeah. other one is for all for those of you that have seen us before, for all of our live audiences, we always give an awesome deal that's for our live audiences only. And we have some exclusive giveaways that I'll talk about at the end tonight. So anybody that wants to meet one-on-one or whatever, we can absolutely do that. Just stick around to the end and we'll we'll talk about how to execute that. Yeah. And it's per award. So the more awards you upload, the more 
whatever, your name is in there that many times. So yeah, we're trying to incent you. And Matt will show you in a little bit how to do that. It's very beneficial to you, right? And we love to get these awards because then we can get better and better at projecting awards, which is what we do. So go in there and take care of that. So let's kick, let's get started here. You, some of you, probably a decent amount of the parents, if we have some students here, you've gotten in and you might not have heard from all your schools, regular decision, the IVs and stuff you haven't heard yet. But if you apply to early decision or early action, you've been admitted and you've received most likely something called a financial aid award letter. So that comes from the Office of Financial Aid. So you send in, your child sends in their app, they get admitted, and you might receive what's called merit aid or merit scholarships, your kids. So that's bucket two on here. That's the merit scholarship. So that's Office of Admissions wanting your wanting the student and starting to lower their sticker price starting to discount off the top they have no idea about your ability to pay so that's not the financial aid award letter that's office of admission saying congratulations you got in here's your provost scholarship then financial aid gets to work you submit financial aid forms which you have to do to get a financial aid award letter so fafsa definitely and see this profile if that's required by the school then you get this financial aid award letter. That's what we want you to upload. And what's going to be on there are grants, which are need-based free money from the college, endowment money, basically. Or it could be federal federal grants if you're eligible, Pell Grant, FSEOG, or state grants. And these are all based on financial need, but it's free money. Then that number two here, that's the merit scholarships, still free money from the endowment, just not based on your need. The third bucket is going to be work study. You have to have financial need because it's a federal program, but basically they might say you get 2,500 of work study. That means your child's going to apply for a job, a work study job, have to go through that process, get a job, work the hours get a paycheck, get a W-2, and then that money can be used to pay for college. The government's paying half the wage. That's why it's need-based and it's a federal program. Then the last bucket are student loans and parent loans. And that's going to be our next webinar in our series in May. We'll start talking about how to borrow. So you're going to see some loans in a minute and we'll discuss them really high level, but we'll get in the weeds on that on the next, because that's a whole webinar in and of itself. So those are the four pieces that you're going to see on this financial aid award letter. So if you see direct federal student loans, that's your tip off that, yeah, this is what I want to upload into my cap, which is our software. This is my financial aid award letter. So let's look at a couple of these because no two are the same, unfortunately, just like everything in this process, the colleges are all a little different how they do things, which makes it confusing. It really does for families. So let's look at this one. This The first thing that they're sharing at the top is the cost of attendance. So this is what we call our sticker price, right? This is the all-in cost for the school for the first year. So they nicely break it out into the different line items, which is good. And the total cost, and this is a couple years old, is I'm rounding up about $60,000, right? Then they say to the family, your EFC, your contributions, meaning this is what they think you can afford if you agree or not, that's another question, of for this family about $36,000. So that's what they think you can bring to the table. They take the difference and they get $23,000. So that's this family's need. Then the schools start meeting the need in some way. So what this school is saying is, here's a very large parent plus loan, which is now called a direct plus loan, but I still call it parent plus because it, it is a parent loan. The student is not involved. And then they're giving the student a federal direct subsidized and unsubsidized loan. That's the package that they're giving to meet this need. And that totals at the bottom $56,374. And that's their award. It's all loans. So there's, remember those buckets I talked about, there's no need-based grants, even though there's need, and there's no merit aid. Because that's just how this school for this specific student is going to work. Now let's look at one that's a lot different, University of Denver, DU. So they break out the costs of attendance again, and they even go further to say, here's the direct costs, which is nice because that's what you're paying 
as the name says, directly to the college. Then there's indirect costs. You have some wiggle room here. Transportation can be different from family to family, depending on how far you are from the college. Even personal expenses can be much higher than this, and you might knock them down. Then they get in the package. So there's a chancellor scholarship, which is merit. And then there's a residence hall grant. And it says grant. So could be need. That one could be need. It could be a first year. Hey, you're living in the dorms money. It's really important to understand if there's an indecision about is it merit or is it need? You really want to figure that out because merit aid is almost always offered for four years as long as a student maintains a certain GPA. So when you're doing your four-year view of what this costs, which I strongly recommend you do, you can put that as a deduction, as a discount for every year. Need-based aid, if you all of a sudden get a raise or change jobs and get a big promotion, win the lottery. That's going to change what you get in need-based aid. But merit will stay steady. So it's a nice it's a nice thing, but you want to dial that in. Then they're also giving, you, you see this again, the direct subsidized and unsubsidized loans. You can only get those if you submit the FAFSA. That's all you need to do, and your child will automatically be awarded them. One of the, one of the main reasons why... Matt and I tell all families to submit the FAFSA. There's other ones as well. And then they say, all right, here's your direct costs without loans, which is what really matters, the 39000 here. But then they say, all right, take the loans, then you're looking at 334. So that's a nice breakdown too, because the loans have to be repaid, obviously. This one, I'm just going to, the only reason I put this on here is to point out that some school, and this is Occidental, and it was funny last night, one of our parents said, Oxy's a funny name, nickname for a school. And Matt and I laughed like we'd never thought of the drug when we hear Oxy, but now I always will. But anyways, Oxy, as they call themselves, they are offering a low interest loan that they are funding. So in my experience, this happens now and again, these could be decent loans. So it's something to look at, see what the interest rate is, what the terms are. So that's why I wanted to show you this one. There's a lot of the same sort of stuff that we've seen on the other ones. And then of course, down in this bottom right-hand corner, there's that parent plus loan again, because what the colleges are allowed to do is take their cost of attendance, their full cost, subtract anything that they give the student between the loans from the government, grants, scholarships, and whatever that difference is, they're allowed to say to the parent, you can take out 45000 of a parent plus loan to make up the difference. That doesn't mean you should, right? This, this is borderline predatory lending, in my opinion. That's a whole nother conversation. But so I'm just planning that seed. I'm not saying you shouldn't take out these loans, but it's they need to be repaid and you want to do the math and you want to understand how that all works. And we'll get in into that, like I said, when we talk about how to pay. So those, that's the financial aid award letters and giving you an idea of a few different versions of what you should be looking for. So now the next question is, okay, great. I got my award. Is it, is it a good award? Is it a fair award? So I'm going to let you take over here, Matt. Yeah, thanks. And a couple things before I dive in. Number one, guys, please. I know a bunch of folks showed up right after we kicked off and gave our opening housekeeping stuff, but please put all your questions in the Q and A as opposed to the chat, because that's where we're banging away and they're transcribed and they're saved. So your peers get to benefit from those questions and those answers. So yeah. So just copy them if you don't mind, paste them over into the Q and A. Yeah. Yeah. So sorry to be a pain there, but please do. That's the best place for us to be able to get to as many questions as possible. Again, we won't be able to hit everyone tonight, but I promise we'll leave you in good hands and talk about what, what happens for those of you who don't get your questions answered. The other thing, Peg, and actually, this is a good reminder for us. We need to have a slide that says this explicitly because we got a bunch of different questions and different, basically saying the same thing. Hey, should we submit our deposit, accept the offer and submit our deposit before we appeal. No, that gives the school lots of leverage. At most schools, that will be a factor. And they will have that conversation in the appeal committee room. They'll say, did these guys submit their deposit yet? That'll be a factor in that conversation, right? For those of you that already did submit your deposit, don't freak out. That doesn't mean you're dead. You don't have a chance. You absolutely do. And guess what? We can say 
whether it's, you know, we do or don't, we can say we're submitting more than one deposit. Yes, we submitted a deposit to you, but we're hedging our bets here. Colleges don't love that, but the fact of the matter is that can happen. And so it's not too late, but don't do it if you haven't already. And then another misconception, and this is, and I totally get the misconception, it's confusing and all these colleges are so different. We got a few questions. The basic, what they're looking for is saying, hey, we haven't got a financial aid award letter yet. Do we need to accept enrollment to that school in order to get our actual award letter? Again, the answer is no, it will come. Even if you get no need-based financial aid outside of the federal government student loan that you're entitled to, $5,500 your freshman year, you will in offer. Okay. So don't accept anything. Don't submit any deposits before you go through this process because we want to have that leverage. Okay. So like Ped said here, a couple of things I want to walk you through. This is our platform, right? For those of you guys that have already set up your account, this is your dashboard that you get dumped into. And what I want to show you specifically is where and how to upload your financial aid award letters. And I, I actually was thinking of something based on a few questions and they were along the lines of, hey, we received less in scholarships than we would have expected or we're disappointed basically. But any schools that you put in here, if we click into them, I'm just going to click on Santa Clara as an example here. There's a whole bunch of information in here. We're projecting what we expect or what we think you should get based on your family situation, need-based aid and merit-based aid. But one thing that we'll rely on a little bit this time of year, especially for non-need-based families, right? Because I've also got a bunch of questions for families saying, we're not going to be eligible for need. We're not eligible for need. Do we have a leg to stand on? Short answer is yes. But one thing I like to look at is number one, what scholarship were we projecting here? If you got less, we know we got we have a leg to stand on there. And we can usually get some explanation in terms of the why. Well, what is the average GPA and test scores at the school? And where does your kid stack up there? Another thing that I like to always look at when I'm thinking about appeals for a family is, what is the average amount of scholarships that they give per student, right? Santa Clara here, 15,000 and change. That's the average scholarship that they get. So if your kid got 10, I would want to say uh, that even that piece of data is enough ammunition to push back and say, hey, we got $5,000 less than the average student gets at, at your college. That can oftentimes be grounds for a successful appeal. It's just one way to leverage a platform here. Th that, that was a deviation from what I wanted to show you, but I still think it's relevant. For those of you that are just getting in here, and obviously those of you that are familiar kind of get how this works, but what we want you to do, and this is for your benefit and ours too, so we can have as, as so we can get smarter, right, in terms of projecting what families get at these colleges. But we want you to upload your award letters, right? So you go down to the translate and compare section and you put in whatever relevant college we're talking about. Okay. So let's say Boston University. And then you're going to upload that file here. There's certain criteria in terms of what type of file and how big it is and all that that needs to add up here. And then you're just going to say, translate my award letter, right? Translate my offer letter. Now, sometimes when I'm sharing my screen, this takes a second, but as Peg showed you, and I'm sure as a ton of you are experiencing, these award letters are, there's no consistency. And they're very confusing to try to figure out ultimate, what is this college offering? What's free money? What's a grant? What's a scholarship? What can I count on being there for all four years versus what could change from one year to the next? Or what's just a one year deal? And then ultimately, what am I going to have to pay? I might have to stop sharing if this doesn't here. I'll give it just one more second. Okay. Yeah. Hey, there we go, right on right on cue. But it's it's gonna we have a uniform way to help you guys translate what's the deal? What's a need-based grant? What's a scholarship? What's the loan? Ultimately, what am I gonna be left to pay for out of pocket? And let me compare side by side apples to apples and just simplify and understand what I'm looking at. Like one of our main gets, one of our a lot of times we think of ourselves as having a little bit of an adversarial relationship with some colleges or the college system in general. And one of our biggest, even though we have a lot of college folks that work and we'll talk about them that are on our team, right? We've had a couple of families ask about MIT and Harvard, and we have the directors of financial aid at MIT and Harvard as they're our teammates here, right? You can meet with those uh, if you want, but there's an overall lack of transparency, 
right? And that's one of our biggest problems. So many families don't understand what they're getting into, and that's what we're trying to solve for. And this is just one way that we do that. So the first piece is to help you understand what you're looking at. The second piece is, did you get a good deal, guys? What is the likelihood that we can go back to this school and get a couple more bucks or maybe a lot more, right? And we're telling you, we're flagging this award from Boston University here. And we see a couple of answers or we see a couple of data points as to why, but we can drill down again and get some more context, okay, if we want. Again, the main thing that, that we're trying to communicate is you should be pushing back at BU. And we're going to talk about the how and the when as we over the next half hour here. But the big get that, that we want you to understand from the platform is you should be appealing, okay? You should be asking for more money here. Now, here's the three big reasons. Number one, Boston University's net price calculator, our net price calculator, said that based on this family situation, based on this student, and based on how BU says that they conduct business, they should have got 15000 more than they did. So they were under-awarded. So we want to push back based on that. Boston University, and they're just one of several hundred at least, just based on the methodology that they use to calculate financial aid, to calculate scholarship, by the nature of their process, there's an, the term that we use, the kind of layman term that we use, there's wiggle room, right? Other examples here are schools, private schools that use what's called the federal methodology. Just any school that fits into that bucket there's wiggle room, okay? There's usually pretty high odds for having a successful appeal. Now, I'm probably confusing you. I'm telling you a little bit more than you need to know. Don't worry about it. Put the award in here. We're going to tell you. And then there's family considerations. Again, this is just a couple of the data points for this family. This is a two-household family. Divorced parents, by the nature of that, that generally speaking, there, there's more of an opportunity to appeal successfully. So again, that's we want to make sure that you're taking advantage of that, number one, helping you understand what these award letters mean. And I think more importantly, did you get a good deal? All right. Let me share again. And we are going to be answering, you guys are asking great questions about how to appeal for merit. I'm going to Talk about that in a few minutes. How is it affected with ED? We're going to hit all that. So I figure I'm just telling you that the people that have asked that. Okay. So let's, you got, but you, kudos, you guys are asking really good questions. Okay. So the next question, should we always appeal? The answer is no. Most of the time, probably yes, but let's talk about when it's a good candidate for appealing and when not so much. So if we look on the left side here, if you're a betting person, which I'm not a Vegas girl, but if you're a betting person, private colleges are a much better bet for appealing than state schools. Now, I will say the public state schools, and I'm going to give you, you can tell your share about Iowa in a minute, Carp, but- with state schools, I will say, if you've had a change in circumstance at any school, meaning, and we had a question in there that I think came in before we even started our intros about, hey, I lost my job or something was very different or they were you, you were going to retire. I forget exactly what you said in your question. Is that something I can share and how do I do that? Absolutely. So if he, all you 23 parents, if you remember, if you haven't blocked it out of your memory, when you submitted those forms, all the questions were about 2021, your tax year. So if your current reality is worse or 2022 was worse, or you retired or something substantive that's different, or you took a retirement distribution, you had a huge capital gain, anything that inflated your income and was a one-off anom anomaly, that's, you should even consider doing that to the state schools because they don't know that. And you could get into need-based aid territory, especially if you're an in-state kid, there's going to be a better chance than if you're an out-of-state kid. So I will say that about the state schools. But in general, if things have stayed the same and you have, say you have need, but you're like, what the heck? They're not meeting it. They don't usually meet a lot of need for out-of-state kids. Even if you have 20,000 of need, but you've got a $30,000 EFC, they're not gonna give you a dime. And that's a good thing. I hope all the sophomore and junior parents are hearing that. So as you're building that college list, you will see that modeled in MyCap because we know that and we're modeling that. 
So that's why I will say it's a good idea with state and publics to appeal, but most of the time, probably not. You can try. And some people I meet with and they're like, I really want to try it. And so I guide them, but I say, we'll keep our fingers crossed, but I'm not optimistic. So private schools are better. If you have any COVID impact still, that again is making your life worse now than it was in 2021. We were more in the throes of COVID in 2021, but whatever it is, you know, it use it. Whatever cards you have to put on the table for an appeal of this nature, definitely use them. If you're divorced, separated, or remarried, that's a big one because the CS profile schools, which is the second financial aid form that about 300 colleges require along with the FAFSA, they ask about both sets of parents. And most of them look at both sets, but there's a certain way they're supposed to look at parents, especially if they're remarried and they don't always follow. We've helped a lot of families. Let's push back on them and see what they're doing because we're calculating EFCs and it doesn't jive with the package that we see. So that's another trigger to think I should dig into this. The next bullet, I know we'll get questions. It says, watch out for IM versus FM school. So on your MyCap account, you're going to see a federal EFC on the far left. And then the next one's going to be institutional. That's what FM and IM mean. So FAFSA only schools follow the federal methodologies methodology and the institutional CS profile schools follow the institutional methodology. So you can appeal to both of these, right? And Matt loves to appeal to the private federal methodology schools. There's a lot of wiggle room there. And I don't disagree with that. The institutional methodology has other planning opportunities and other things around it that he showed you in the tool that we're going to flag for you and say, hey, this methodology, hey, you're a business owner, because that's the next one here. If you're a business owner, it's another thing to keep in mind, because when you submit the C, and you'll remember this, you've seen your parents, you had to upload through IDOC or through their system all of your tax returns and your W-2s. And they're doing that because they're going into the business part of your return. If it's the Schedule C, the Schedule E, if you have real estate, and they're going in there and maybe throwing out some of the expenses that the IRS honors as a deduction, but they're saying, man, we're going to throw that out. And all of those are talkable points when you appeal. So that's another thing, business owners. And then the last one here, we've got a bunch of questions around this because it's a good one that we want to hit. You can appeal merit awards. You definitely can. And the best way to do that is if you have competing offers and you can leverage my cap to go and look at the, the merit awards. And if your child got 15,000, but you see the next bump is 18 or 20, that might be a good ask. And you can see what the average kid got and go from there. So that 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 covers pretty well, should we always appeal? Um, as I said at the beginning, you guys are going to get this deck. So we have some of these slides. We just want it to be so you guys can review this tomorrow. Matt talked about where you fit in the admin profile. It, that's what he showed you when he was in my cap. The deadline to send your enrollment deposit is May 1. Doesn't mean schools aren't going to accept you after and reach out after because they can now. There was a thing that happened a couple of years ago and now it allows them to do that. But the practice still is, hey, get that in by May 1 to hold your spot. So that's why you want to be appealing so that you have time to hear back from the college and be able to assess things before May 1 to make a decision if you haven't sent in your deposit yet before this. Again, a bunch of good bullets for you to review. I'm gonna hit the first one and the last one just in the interest of time so we can get through everything. People asked about early decision. You absolutely can appeal early decision. For people that don't, it's ED is the common way to be referred to. This is where when you apply for admission, you say, I'm gonna sign a contract and I'm going to come if you let me in. So a lot of schools fill a third of their class or half of their class with early decision and maybe early action kits. So it's an admission play, not so much financial aid because you do lose a little leverage, but if you can't afford it, you can get out of the contract. My opinion, you should do your due diligence and know if you can afford it. But from an appeal standpoint, I've helped families, I can look at award letters and use my cap, use our data and know that a student was under awarded if they had need-based eligibility. I see that, not all the time, but I see it. It's not rare. 
And then when you reach out to the school and point it out, then sometimes they'll say, oh, okay, yeah, we got to, we're not meeting the average need or we're not even close that we meet for students. So we'll up the ante. So you do have some leverage there if you understand how the school awards. And then the last bullet here is where do you appeal? So we're talking about appealing for merit aid, which is competing awards from, yeah, competing awards from like school. And that's going to be done to the Office of Admissions because they're the ones, if you remember at the beginning that I said, they're the ones that are awarding the merit aid. So you need to do the appeal over there. If it's a need-based aid appeal, that's being put together, that part of the package by the Office of Financial Aid. So you've got to pick part makes sense. And I've had a couple of families here and there that will be appealing for merit at certain schools over here and then other schools for need. Because you might have need at a really expensive school, but not need at a cheaper school. It just, it depends on your situation, your family situation. So that's a really important nuance. And Matt's going to go into the weeds in a minute about exactly how we recommend you do these appeals to be as successful as you can be. So I teed that up for you, buddy. Oh, you're on mute. You're on mute. I was complimenting your segue. Well done. <laughs> So it's like you've done this before, Peggy. Yeah. Let me, uh, if you would be so kind, share my screen. So the so we're getting a bunch of questions, and I actually forgot to say this about some folks having trouble or not successfully having their awards evaluated within their MyCap accounts. I I forgot two really important points in order for this to work successfully. The first one being you have to complete a hundred percent of your profile. So when you're setting up your account, we're asking you, okay. What's your zip code? What's your student's GPA? What's the estimate on household income? Things that we need to do to, number one, make some projections here, and number two, be able to tell you if you got a good award. But 100% of that has to be complete. This, In this case, 100% of it is complete. If it wasn't, it would say 86 or 40%. So you could just click on the tab here, click on here, and fill in whatever questions you don't have. Yeah, it'll highlight what's missing. And then you just, fill, even if it's a zero, if it, you left a blank, just put a zero and then hit save and you'll be good. The other thing here is that for any school that you want evaluated, it has to appear in the shop for schools section because the system basically has to, we have to be able to project it to say, here's what we think you're going to get at Amherst, NYU, Penn State, whatever, versus here's what you actually got. So it has to be in this shop for schools section as well. So and then the last piece is, again, if your file is too big or you're putting the acceptance letter in there, which is very common and it's easy to make that mistake or it's not legible, those could be some other reasons that it's a technology, it's not perfect, and this thing's been live for a few weeks here. But so far, so good. It is working correctly for most people. And write into us and tell us if it's not for you in, in addition to, to telling us here. So... This, let me see. Oh, and Peggy, sorry. You might have put the slide back up. Yeah, please. I went off script there a little bit, pal, but I wanted to make sure I address that. So this is on its surface, a very simple slide, right? Really bare bones, easy enough. But this is, this is the rainmaker right here. This is what, if you can, this is a big part of our formula for how we peep help people get more money from colleges. This thing is over 15 years old and has evolved. The main architect or architects is myself, a couple other folks on our team, and who deserves the most credit is Ryan Callahan. He's right now, he's a director of financial aid at Harvard Medical School, but he was a director of financial aid at MIT before that, Boston College before that. His wife has been a director of financial aid, a bunch of different institutions they're the top of the food chain when it comes to financial aid on that side of the fence. And we're just really lucky to have Ryan and Josh, who's at MIT right now, and Laura, who was the director of financial aid at Dennis. These currently employed financial aid directors, we have this incredible insight into what's happening on that side of the fence. And then them coaching us up to say, hey, here's how to come back to our college and colleges in general and other colleges and get a better deal than you got initially, right? The, the blueprint. So that's why I put a lot of emphasis on this slide. Some of this stuff is pretty straightforward. Some of it is, or one of these bullet points here is getting really in the weeds and Peggy teased it a little bit here, but I want to quickly go through it or, and not too quickly because I want, because I think this is one of the most important pieces here. Now, Peg talked about the fact if we're appealing 
for more merit-based scholarships. We're probably doing that with the admissions office. If we're appe appealing for more need-based financial aid, we're probably doing that with the financial aid office. It is not uncommon to do both, right? We do both with a decent amount of frequency here, okay? But when we're talking about the financial aid office, and, and this is relevant at the admissions office too, Ryan and Peg always laugh. We always laugh at Ryan. Me and Peg have a sense of humor. Ryan, it's you got to work hard to find it. He's a serious dude, right? <laughs> and he does these presentations with us sometimes. And it, I have to battle to get him to crack a smile, right? That's very rewarding when that happens. But so it's ironic that he tells us like, well, listen, you have to bring some color to this. You have to understand that my job and our job as financial aid counselors is we're staring at the numbers. We're operating within our college's formula. We want to make this a profitable operation, okay? And the nuance from their standpoint is give you enough money that you sign up, but we're still getting a good deal as the institution, right? And that's really easy for me to do when I'm just staring at these numbers. What makes my job a lot harder is when I get that email, I get that phone call, I have that meeting with that family that says the best day of our lives was getting accepted into the college. The worst day was when we got our financial aid offer two weeks later. And I'm thinking, I'm going to have to go tell my kid that we can't swing this, right? We can't swing what they worked their butt off for 18 years to achieve. Right away, that creates, a, a, a that tone gets him, and again, I'm just using Ryan as an example, ex-financial aid officer, ex-admission counselor, right, gets them motivated to say, I want to go make this happen for this family. How can I go to bat for this family? And we want to spoon feed them, make their job easier. Ryan, we did our homework we figured out that if you guys could come up with another 7,500 bucks, we'll sign on the dotted line. It's still going to be a stretch, but we will figure out a way to make that happen, right? Don't make it abstract. Let's go ask for a specific amount. We've mentioned this more than once tonight. This is where we want to have competing offers, right? It is very, for you underclassmen, right? Any underclassmen, it's incredibly common that when we are helping you put your list of colleges together, we will make you apply to certain schools that your kid has zero interest of attending. We just know they're a competing school. We're going to get a better offer and we're going to leverage, against one, leverage them against one another. This is what we're doing many times over on a daily basis right now, right? Leveraging colleges against one another. These are businesses. These are multi-billion dollar corporations, okay? This is a part of the process and we want to have that mindset as consumers as we approach it specifically with this part of the puzzle. Peg, did we say we're not allowed to use the word negotiate yet? We did not say that yet, no. Shame on you, first of all, okay? I'm, I mean, and how about me bringing it? I'm growing here, but I, you are, you are. we have to use the word appeal. These They're very particular, okay? We're appealing for additional need-based financial aid and or merit-based scholarships, okay? And, they, and I'm being serious about this. That word, negotiate, will hurt your chances of having a successful appeal, believe it or not. So that's- and it's a mindset more, the word dict, it's a certain mindset. And that's what we don't want you to have. You're not buying a car. You're not negotiating for a car. And if it comes off that way, another thing we've learned from Ryan and Josh and our experts that are in these financial aid offices currently, like they want to deal with families that they'll be delighted to talk to the next year and the next year and the next year. So if you show up as not that kind of family and another family shows up and is easier to deal with and the kids are equally competitive could hurt your chances. So it's, you really want to change your mindset around it. And that's an important, it's an important point, right? And I do that we, I think it's easy to take for granted. Like Ryan would be like, I don't want to deal with this guy for the next four years, right? If he's a jerk, I was like, no. And I hope your kid doesn't come here basically. So that's important to keep that in mind. And I think mindset is right. This one is what I was talking about where we're like PhD level tip in terms of appealing here. Now, as you guys have experienced, a lot of these, a lot of colleges, but specifically these private colleges, they want all your federal tax returns, all the schedules. If they, if you're a business owner, give me the S corp return, give me the, give me the schedule C, the whole, and it's presented. We just want to verify what you put on the financial aid applications. That's not why they're asking for the forms. Peg said this kind of in passing earlier. They're going into those forms to look at your deductions, and they're just going to make some of their own interpretations. You own another piece of property. You wrote off depreciation. We're not counting that. We're going to add that back onto your income. Now you're a business owner. You wrote off your software. We're not counting that. You're not a business owner, but you've had write-offs for 
any number of things. You itemize your deduction. We're not counting those, okay? Unbeknownst to the consumer here, they're going in there and not counting a percentage of your deductions, which raises your income, which raises your EFC, and allows them to justify giving you less in need-based financial aid. How are you supposed to know that? You're not, and you don't know that. Unless you're working with us or you've seen one of our presentations, you don't. And the fact of the matter is, your likelihood of having a successful appeal a lot of it hinges on how sophisticated it is. That's just the deal, right? And these guys tell us this all the time. Just asking for more money, sorry, no thanks. But if you're say, hey, I'm thinking that you did not count some of the deductions that the IRS did count on my tax returns. I would like to have the answer to that and challenge you if that's the case. If they challenge you, Peg's going to show a before and after about this year about Occidental and treating home equity, which is a common theme when we challenge these schools on them holding our homeowners, them holding the equity against us. That's a sophisticated appeal and they would love to shut us up with more money. And that means everybody wins, right? So it matters how we do this. And that's an important step. Persistence, right? Now, we're not reinvented the wheel here, but it demonstrates interest, which is an important part here. It tells that school that you are invested, right? And again, we're not being a jerk. We're, what is it? Sugar works better than vinegar or whatever it is. But you no, know, and we're being super kind, but there's nothing wrong with being persistent to let them know how serious you are about trying to make this happen for your kid, for your family. The last one, in terms of the student leading the charge, that is absolutely the case, specifically if it's for merit-based scholarships and at the admissions office, they should be seeking out their admissions counselor. They should be the loudest voice in the room when appealing for more merit-based scholarships and the parents there in a supporting role. Whereas if it's need-based financial aid, and we're talking about having, we had a huge year in 2021, and now 2022, our income is way different. We lost a job, we're retiring. We can't access our home equity right now because the rates have skyrocketed, so don't hold that against us. It makes sense for the parent to be leading that conversation. And then the student is there in more of a supporting role, providing kind of color commentary in the background for why they want to make it happen and why they're invested in this along with their parents. So hopefully that's helpful, but because those are, I think, the, like the really important like hows to do this successfully. Peg's going to show you an example of a before and after here, and then I'm going to talk about how we can do this with you. I think if we do a good enough job of this presentation to send a lot of you DIYers on your way, where you, hopefully you can go now and do this successfully on your own. I think your odds are better if we're on your team and a part of this. And we'll talk about that in a second here. But before we do, Peggy, if you want to show them the award from Oxy. Sure. Right here, right here. Okay. So this is an example of one of our, one of our experts, another Matt Mall did with a family at Occidental. So this was the award pre-appeal. So this family or the student received 12.5 in the merit scholarship, right? And then a nice grant of almost $22,000. So the family had need. The merit meets part of the need, but they still had need on top of that. So nice amount of money there, over $34,000. Matt looked at their situation, and this one happened to be around home equity, which is another big one, primary home equity, meaning the home you live in. These CS profile schools, most of them look at it, and that's another discussion point for appeals. So he went into that. They didn't lose their merit, which you won't. Got the merit, but look at that grant. That grant jumped from twenty two thousand to forty nine thousand. So started at thirty four two. After the gift aid, the free stuff was sixty two thousand dollars. So a nice increase. We are not here to tell you that this is common, right? I think our average appeal is quite good this year so far. It's at about ten thousand. But part of it, full disclosure, we've had a couple really big ones that have thrown the average way up. And now we're really getting into appeal time with all the regular decision stuff. Full disclosure on the math on that. Usually we say we usually do three to 5,000 if it's an award that is appealable, like I talked about at the beginning. If you're going to bring us a bunch of state schools and you're an out-of-state kid with no change in circumstance, that's just not probably going to work. So you just want to realize with these private schools, it is worth your time. It is worth your time to dig in 
And if you're a DIYer and you want to do it yourself, that's great. But Matt's going to talk about how we can help you. And actually, that's the wrong code. So I'm going to stop sharing this because that's the code for tomorrow. Uh, I was supposed I, to change this out and I screwed up. So that's on me. You were just making fun of me. I was making fun of you. For, see, instant, car instant karma is going to get you, buddy. You I was just making fun of Matt about putting up a slide with the wrong code earlier. Today. Listen to John Lennon, huh? So that's all on me. So I'm going to put the correct coupon code in the chat right now to vindicate myself. So it's more 20. So I yeah. put it in there. Don't use more 15 because that's well, for let, the people that aren't live. Okay. Let me, and let me, let's talk about next steps here. Right. And like I said, we take care of our folks that show up live with us. I think we do a great job of that. So we're going to do that again tonight. We're excited to do that. For those of you guys that are just, uh, we know who you are. Like I just show up to get myself educated and I I can do this on my own. We got you, right? We have a, there's a, you, you saw, you can set up the software for free. Oh, and put, did you put this link in the chat? No, I will right now. Yeah, put this yeah. link in the chat, please. We have all these great free resources. We're, our experts are monitoring in here. It's office hours every other Monday, 7 Eastern time. It's Peg, it's Dan, it's Vern, it's Chuck, it's me. We're showing up trying to answer as many questions as we can. And again, just making sure that we continue to support you guys. Here's my firm recommendation. Full stop for you class 2023 families. If you haven't already, set up your MyCap account. Select the Val Victorian option. If you already have one, upgrade. I'll show you in the platform how to do that in a second. Upgrade, choose the Val Victorian option, and book an hour with one of us. Use the coupon code MORE20. It expires at midnight tonight, right? And it actually expires, okay? And you for 240 bucks, you'll get access to the whole platform for a year. Okay. All the bells and whistles. And there's a lot. Okay. Private scholarship search engine that we didn't talk about tonight. But most importantly, you're going to have one of us and access to our team to help you with your appeal. Book it tonight, even if you don't have your appeal yet, because you don't have to schedule your meeting tonight. But take advantage of that. Do not overthink this, guys. I know when you're looking at $85,000 prices and the thought of spending money right now is not is the last thing you want to be thinking about. This is a smart investment. You will get a return on this investment. If you don't, this is being recorded. I'm on record here. Say I want a full refund. We won't think twice. You'll get a hundred, you'll get your money back. No question, no questions asked, right? If you don't feel like that hour was worth your time and helped you have a successful, you get your money. To, again, you can meet with Ryan Callahan, the director of financial aid at Harvard, Josh DeMail, director of financial aid at MIT, Laura Meeks, who's at the Columbia. College of Art, School of Art and Design, Columbus yeah. School of Design now, formerly of Denison. Mike, I'm um, forgetting his last name, Director of Financial Aid at Oklahoma, or he's at Director of Scholarship Office, University of Oklahoma. Myself, Peg, I know we don't have a ton of availability right now. No, I'm getting, don't, hey. yeah, don't, you know, I don't want you to wait to talk to me. I would love to talk oh, to you, but and, you, and you guys, want to get this going, we're, yeah. We're picked next available, like the, some of the folks you haven't heard of, we mentioned Vern, he's if I if it's me, that's why I would pick, right? That's yeah. Matt Mulhern. Somebody Mulhern. actually wrote in and said they want to meet with him. Yeah, we yeah, call yeah. him Vern, but that's Verno. Verno, he's pretty good. If you want you and if you want a little taste of authentic New Jersey, you go ahead and you book with Vern. But anyways, it's don't overthink this, right? It's book your hour, do it for two hundred and thirty nine bucks, and then in, you are on average. Our average right now so far this season, I just looked before this, Peggy, we're like $11,000 more on appeals. That's exaggerated. I'm not promising that because we've had some crazy, you saw that $30,000 one. We had a $52,000 one. I'm forgetting what school that was from that Dan was a part of, Peg. But I forget too. So that $11,000 is a little inflated. I wish I could like set that expectation. But three and I just, and I said that a minute ago too, like full right. transparency, right. you know. Yeah. But that, but again, we're able to identify those things. And in worst case scenario, we maximize your odds of having a successful appeal. And it's also a meaningful hour. I do a lot of these meetings. We get our appeal in order. We review your FAFSA, we'll see if there's any mistakes that you made, see if we can poke some holes in there. And then also talk about a lot of times it evolves into, we're still going to have to borrow money. If we have to borrow money, how do we, what's the best way to do that? And we can have that conversation and just really quickly before. Yeah. And realize it doesn't expire because some people are saying, can it be extended? If you know you want a meeting, just go book it 
through the software. You don't have to schedule it now. Right. Just grab your 20% off. And then when you're ready in a week, then you can go ahead and schedule it when you have, because you do want to have everything and you want to have it all uploaded. So you don't have to worry. The expiration is just to purchase it. You can right. book it. Don't wait too long. You can even book it two weeks from now because you think that's when you'll need it. And then if you don't have everything, you can reschedule. But yeah, don't worry about that piece of it. And it's not lost on me, guys, that we're doing the, or I'm doing a hard sell here, but it's because I believe in this so much. And I just know I've been working with you folks for 20 years and I understand everybody's different. And it's this is the one where I'm like, I so many people have come back and said, oh, I just did this. And I'm like, don't do that over this. Like the, take advantage of our expertise, right? And this is what we're really good at. And we have a direct line, our network that we can tap into is pretty, is pretty amazing. So this is where you do it within your account. So that's my firm recommendation for you underclassmen, what you would consider, this is not going to make sense for, for class 2023 families, but for underclassmen, this is a good place to start. If you just want to book an hour to be like, where the heck do I get started? But what you might consider is we have a more comprehensive service, and this is not for everybody, and the price point's a lot more than what we're talking about here, but we have what we call our wake me up when it's over package, where we guide families from A to Z through this entire thing, right? So we help you build your list of colleges. We complete the FAFSA and see it for you. We're the ones on the front lines appealing for you. We're showing you how to pay the bill here. Now, the Again, the price points way more expensive. It's twenty nine ninety nine. But for those families that again, and, and we have like, if you just feel like you don't have time for this, you don't have the expertise, you're a divorced or separated family, you're a business owner. These are families that it makes sense for us to just basically take the wheel and drag you through this process. Ultimately, right? Again, it's not for everybody, but we just know that there's a percentage of families that want that that need that, right? We have a similar package that is just for admissions, right? Where you just say, hey, I want somebody to kick my kid's butt. I'm not worried about the financial aid piece, but I want somebody to drag my kid through. How do they get started on building the list, their essay, the common app, the making sure their interviews are back now. I want them to get coached up on interviews and again, make sure they're nailing that. We have a package just for that. It's That's 4,000 bucks. It's a little bit more, right? What I think is the best deal, if again, you're one of these types of families, is we have a combo, right? And it's and essentially for, I actually even forget what the price is, but for both of them, we can both find out together here. It's a lot of money, right? It's $49.99, 5,000 bucks. If you want to wake me up when it's over, I want somebody to help me parents with the financial aid piece, drag me through that. I want somebody to drag my kid through the admissions piece. That's something we have. But tonight for if anybody, again, that's an underclassman is the only families it's going to make sense for. But if you do those, the more 20 coupon code gets you 500 bucks off any of those packages. So it's pretty significant in my opinion. So again, you can have the essentially a $7,000 value for 4,500. So again, it's a ton of money, but when we're looking at $85,000 a year again, I believe, and I've seen enough evidence in the ROI that our team's able to demonstrate. So those are the three different ways to leverage us, guys. Peg says this all the time, and I'm in 100% support of it. Our biggest get, Peg and I only did our job tonight, if you continue to follow along in some capacity. You continue to follow along with our webinars. You continue to read the newsletters and blogs that we put out. Continue to stay engaged with our free resources. Just continue to tune in with us. Actually, let me put this. Do you have the Facebook group link here? Maybe I'll just grab it quickly. I have it. It's actually in the deck. Yeah. Okay. I'll just quickly put our, and again, we are experts that are in here monitoring the Facebook group. Our YouTube channel, I think is super robust in terms of any, I would, as a matter of fact, I welcome this challenge. Go on to our YouTube channel. And if you type anything in there and we don't have some content around it or answers to your questions, please say, hey, I'm looking for this answer and we'll have it propped up in very short order. We're actually always looking for new things that, that we can put in there. And yeah, everybody's going to get the slide deck tomorrow. Everybody's going to get the recording tomorrow. And your colleagues will give some type of coupon code, but it's not going to be the same one it is tonight. And the other thing is too, especially for you seniors, 
our band, we got about three more weeks of appeal season here. So the bandwidth is a little, but we're up against it a little bit here. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm saying book your meeting. And then if you need to move it, you need to move it, but you want to give yourself time. You want to get to the colleges. When you send the appeal, ask them, when should I expect to get a response? And then be, as, as Matt said, not a pain, but Put it on your calendar. Hey, have I heard from Oxy? It's been a week. And then just reach out and say, hey, you said it was a week. When should we expect to hear? It's a good, it's just good practice in general and might get things moving. So whatever that phrase is, I always say it wrong to my husband. The uh, I always say the greasy wheel gets turned, but I know that's not right. But you know what I'm saying? Whatever that phrase is, that the hey, more you squeaky wheel gets the grease, man. Oh, yeah, that's sure. <laughs> Come on, we can do better. I always get that. I, I, I never mean, got right. Like, I never yeah, got right. I mean, now you're just showing your age. Enough already. <laughs> Anyways, okay. Yeah, I, there's just so many questions I wish I you know, could answer all. But I just saw one. So, Peter, you're lucking out because I saw your question and it's a, it's in 529s, which is my getting into my love zone. So how do 529s fit? I'm just going to tell you, 529s owned by the parent are considered a parent asset. So most of them are set up with the parent. One of the parents is the owner the student as the beneficiary. It seems it's one of the biggest mistakes people make thinking, well, that's my kids because I'm saving it for my kid, which totally makes sense. But it's actually your asset. That's a non-retirement asset of yours. So when you're doing the forms, don't make that mistake. And if grandma or grandpa have 529s, it's not included. So that's completely off the table. Yeah. And I got to, and we're going to answer that kind of stuff. Like as Matt said, please stay tuned with us, keep the ball rolling. Even if it's through our free resources, we're going to be doing webinars on how to borrow. We're actually going to be, I forget what we're calling, how financial aid works and how to get scholarships or something. I think that's what we're calling it now. That kind of question that you just asked, Peter, that will be answered in there. Somebody I answered, how does the EFC get calculated? That's all the kind of stuff we're going to go over in that webinar. So you're on our email list. Watch for those invites because you will be getting them for sure. We're getting some compliments. So best thing you can do, share us, let other people know about us, put us on a, give us a good score. And again, share us on social or with your friends, word of mouth. Yeah, we do have that Google review link. I got to get that out so we can share it with people. No, but we really appreciate it. And then the, I got a question around the pricing for the Wake Me when it's over. Is it just good for one year? No. It, so whenever you hook up with us, that price is good until your student actually moves into the dorm in college. And then subsequent years, if you stay with us, it's your call. It's $299 for subsequent years. For our platform, for if you're just on the software, if you book the Val Victorian package, that $239, if you do it tonight, it's good for one year. And then after that, it's $4.99 a month, $4.99, 5 bucks a month, essentially. Yeah, we have to say $4, because I said that to a parent the other day, and she said, it's $409. I said, no. It's a Starbucks every month, basically, $4.99. Yeah. So, so if you're an underclassman, you should still get value for, for a while. Yeah, uh, and you want to do your planning, so you don't want to time it. You, you want to get in there and start. The tax year that matters, if you're a sophomore parent, you're in it. 2023 is what you're going to be answering all your questions about when your child's a senior. And for junior parents, it's 22. So it's over, right? So people don't think about it until senior year, but you really want to think about the planning part of it, which will be that other webinar I referenced. Yep. So. Yeah. All I, right. I, I, they stepped up to the challenge, Peggy. They yeah. Up. You guys, I got to say, you might have been, you were just as good as last night. If when I, I see questions and we haven't even done our intro, that's always a good sign that people yeah. are going to be great. So it energizes us. So we thank you that it, we really appreciate it because we love doing this. And when people are engaged, that just makes it that much more fun. And sorry, we're still getting a couple more in terms of how to book the one-on-one -on -one guys. So you have first, you have to set up your MyCap account. So you got to go to MyCap, call jadepro.com. If you haven't set up your account yet, when we're going to ask you what type you want to do, you select the Val Victorian option, right? And then once you're in there, once you've paid, use the coupon code, obviously, more 20 for 20% 20 off. Then you can either book a time now or once or, or at any time. It's just there indefinitely. Like somebody said, I don't want to book an hour until next March. That's fine. You can be on there tonight and then book it 
uh, at your leisure. If you've already- Well, and I'll just say, what if what Matt just said is super confusing and your head spinning, what do I need to do? I'm putting in the chat here, just write to support at College Aid Pro in the, after this webinar and say, Peg told me to email. I want to book a meeting. I have the coupon. I can't figure out how to do it. And our support, our support will help you. We'll help you. And don't worry, you won't lose your discount because tomorrow it changes. But if that didn't make sense, because there are a few steps to make, if you get in there, you'll see it. But if it's confusing, just do that and don't worry. And then you'll We'll set you up to book your meeting. And Susan, for you in particular, I think once you're in here, and you should be able to click this button. Sometimes it says talk to an expert. Sometimes it'll say upgrade. Uh, upgrade. But if you're in the free version, it'll say upgrade. Yeah. But you should be able to click on that and then schedule it. And then, yeah, it says apply coupon or coupon code. And you just pop that in there and you'll see the 20% come, come right off. And we got a great team. If you have trouble, you're going to be taken. Yeah, back. we'll help you out. So don't worry about that. Put us to the test. Peggy, parting words here, buddy. Any words of wisdom? St. Patty's Day, right? Big day. Yeah, happy St. Patty's Day to everybody. Yeah. And I hope you got all your brackets done. Yeah, we're going to lean into that, baby. We, You know what, Peggy? We've earned it. I think we've earned our St. Patty's Day, haven't we? Yep. Yeah. I, wish we could be I got my green on a little early tonight. This is green. Maybe it doesn't look green on Zoom, but it is green. So you always got the spirit. All right, everybody. We appreciate you. Great crowd. Had a blast with you. Hopefully you guys learned some uh, some new tips. And we, for those of you that are new, hopefully this is the first time of many that we get to interface here. Yep. Have a great night, everybody. All right, guys. Bye, Peggy. Bye.